Well, this is my replica air rifle. It's a Winston model of 1894, aka Umarex cowboy rifle. Now, I've had this for about a year now, and I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic bit of kit, really, really good. However, it has developed a gas leak. And unfortunately, um, looking online, apparently this is not uh, not all that uncommon in these. The problem is that <clears throat> whereas the gas cartridges go in here, the leak is not from the seals where the gas cartridges go in. It's actually up here in the receiver, which I think is that it's leaking from the valve which releases the gas to fire the gun. So we've got to take it apart. Now, fortunately, there are a few videos on YouTube which show you how to do this, but the two that I could find, one was in Japanese and the other one was in German. So I'm going to do this because it would be, I think, useful to have one out there <laughs> where the person speaking English who's taking it apart. But also because I have a friend who has got an Imrex Renegade, which is basically the same rifle. Um, his is brand new, he's only had it a few weeks and it's fine. But of course, if it should develop the same problem that mine has in the future, this will be useful to him, hopefully, if he ever has to take his apart. Right, let's get on with it. So the first thing we've got to do is take the stock off. And that is simply this screw here and this screw here. And hopefully this should now pull off. There we go. So you can see the fake wooden stock. They did do a good job of this. It does. This does look very much like wood. So you can put that to one side and move on to the next bit. Now I don't think it's actually necessary to remove the barrel, but it's a fairly simple job to do, and I just think it will make working on it. A lot easier so there's this pin here which secures the whole of the barrel so we're going to try tapping that out apparently it comes out from from this side well, that seems to be coming out okay let's use a slightly uh Longer one. Right, well, let's see if we can get that all the way out. Oh, there we go. Really lost that, which we don't want to do. There we go. Now, hopefully, this should just pull off. Oh, that way. So there you go. That was that was relatively easy. For those of you who've not seen the end of this thing, that's what it looks like. That's the spring-loaded follower for the tube magazine. Yeah. Right, well, we can put the barrel aside and move on to this piece. Now, according to the video, <clears throat> in order to take this off, we've got three screws on this side. There's one there, one there, one there. And then if we flip it over, there's another two screws on this side. There's one there and there's one there. So that's what we should be able to do then is lift this top part off. <clears throat> now I've got, because I'm used, I'm really, really good at losing screws. I've got some little pots that I'm going to put the screws in and label them so I know exactly what goes where. So let's try this then. So it should be this one. None of these screws so far have been really, really tight. Let me get another pot. Which is, which is good, obviously. 
it does make taking it apart easy. From what I've seen in the videos as well, um, uh, there aren't hundreds of springs inside this, which is when I've taken apart some of my pistols, you have to be so careful because there's tiny little springs and they just fly off everywhere, basically. So right, let's see if we can get that one out. Yeah. Okay. So on this side, <coughs> at this end, we've got two little small Phillips screws by the looks of it. Okay. <coughs> right, now this should come apart apparently. It's looking good. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So <coughs> Let's have a close look at what's inside it. Now, where I think it's leaking from is here, because this is the valve in here. We'll, we'll, we'll disassemble the rest of this because I think it all does come apart, but I have seen one spring already. <laughs> so, there is a little spring here. Yeah, let's take that off. That can go in a separate pot, I think. There we go. So I believe, you know, most of this mechanism should you know, lift off. I think it all comes apart like that. Yeah. Okay, the bolts, that's the, the bolt effectively. Not sure whether we can get that out of there because it's in a in a loop. But well, apparently the trigger assembly just lifts off. Allegedly, there we go. Yeah, so the trigger assembly is all one bit, which is quite nice. I'll put that aside. So now all we've got to do is get this off, which is. I think we might need to let's uh, undo the screw here. Ah, there we go. Right, and then this comes off as well. Right. And that is pretty much um, fully disassembled. Oh, yeah, get, get that quite a shot there. Okay, a bit, a bit. This is where I think the problem is. As you can see that that is the actuating valve there and I think that's where it's leaking out of so what we'll do is I'll go and get a CO2 cylinder we just only need one and a dump and an empty one and hopefully that will, you'll see where it's actually leaking out of yeah I don't know whether you can hear that but it's coming out around there coming out around the bank definitely so I think the valve unscrews yeah, so we'll have to take that out and see what we can do with it. Hi, oh, hum. So this is the valve assembly. You've basically got your spring. There's an O-ring there, and, a, and I think it's possibly this black O-ring, which is actually leaking. But I mean, this, this whole thing assembles like that, and then that goes through there. And that, and that basically, that, that is the, the, the valve that releases the gas, which allows the pellet to fire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a real close look at this outer rubber uh, O-ring here, douse the whole lot in some silicon oil and put it back together and see what happens. Well, I've had this apart. There doesn't seem to be any damage to the seals at all, but I've s smothered it all in some silicon gun oil. There we go. 
and I've also poured some silicon gun oil into where the the tube feeds uh, into the lower part of this assembly here. So we'll uh, stick another gas canister in and see whether that's done any good. <laughs> well, that was uh, no good at all. <coughs> so it appeared to be coming out the front this time, not the back. So that's something. So let's further investigate. Well, I think we've got it. I think I didn't have this quite assembled correctly. Just put a new gas can canister in and it appears to be ceiling. I can't hear anything. Nope. We'll see if we can get it to actually release a bit of gas by squeezing that valve. I must admit it is difficult because that is quite tight, that valve, but... Yeah, well, I think we can say that works. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's probably the first time a uh, Humorex cowboy rifle has ever fired a screwdriver across the floor. But it is definitely not leaking. Yay! <laughs> okay, now all I've got to do is see if I can put the bloody thing back together. <laughs> So first up, I've got to release this one. Again, I've tightened that back up. And this goes on the front there. Like that. Right, so that goes in there. This goes under there. Let me just get that in there. Come on, there we go. Right, so that's in there. The trigger mechanism oh, goes on there. It's got to line up with the safety, which it does. Good. Now oh, that's come out again. Right, let's tighten that up. So that. That's not quite right. Oh, fiddle around. So this piece goes in there like that and slots over that pole there. That just sits in there. And then we've got to wiggle this into place because um, we've got this pivot on this end which goes into there. So that, and that one goes on there. So it's got a bit of wiggling around. Right, I think that's how all that goes. And then I've got to remember to put the little um, spring indent in here, which just basically is the ball detent for the safety. So, and then we can put the top back on with a bit of luck. So where did I put that? Oh, there we go. All right. So this goes in there. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not going to stay, is it? What about if I slide it forward? Let's take, yeah, no. Hmm. That's useful. I'll figure out a way of getting, holding that in place before I can put the top on. Well, after numerous attempts to get the little spring detent back in for the uh, safety switch, which goes in here, um, it uh, finally succeeded in its escape attempts and shot across the workshop and I can't find it. <laughs> well, it's not important. It's only the, uh, it, it makes it, it basically just locks the safety in position. Um, it doesn't affect the action of the safety. That's safe and that's fire. Uh, obviously it, without the ball detent, it's not the, you know, it's not that positive click, but it still, it still works. So, it's, you know, I don't think that it's, it's a, it's a problem to necessarily. Got all this back together, which I think is all in the right place so now we put this on hopefully with a bit of jiggling yeah that's all gone together nicely we'll put the screws back in and uh, see how we go from there well it's all back together 
It is strange how they've used a mixture of slotted screws and, and posi drive screws. I, I really find that kind of odd, but there you go. <laughs> it's a Chinese for you. Let's come back out. So, it all appears to work correctly. Now, obviously, I haven't got any, there's no magazine tube in, but uh, it's pretty loud without the barrel on. <laughs> but no leaky gas, that's the important thing. Right, I'm going to put the rest of it back together. Well, I'm happy to report that my Winchester Model 1894 replica is officially fixed. You hear that? That's the sound of silence. And there's definitely gas in there. I've just fired off four or five rounds and it's perfect. It's working just the way it should do. So the only real problem was losing that bloody uh, sprung detent for the uh, safety, which is, uh, that's annoying, but if it ever turns up, it's fairly easy. I know how to take it all apart now, so I, you know, I can have, have another go up to trying to put it in, but uh, very difficult to hold it in place when you're putting this top cover on. So yeah, there you go. Anyway, I hope anyone who's got one of these or a Renegade, because a Renegade's basically exactly the same thing, found this useful should you ever have to take it apart. Uh, like I said, there, I couldn't see any damage and basically all I did was strip the valve down, oil it up with some silicon gun oil. This stuff I find very good. Uh, put it all back together and that's fine. So yeah, how long it will remain that way, I don't know. But um, if it does go again, I will will revisit it. So as always, Thanks for watching. Cheers.